and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And I like to research the ingredients in makeup products and report back my findings to you. And today, I'm going to be reacting slash kind of discussing my theories on what is in this exploding nail polish remover that Christine Simply Nailogical made a video about this past weekend. And we're gonna just kind of be going through some of the things she talked about and what it potentially could be. And at the end of the day, this is just my theory because we don't know what's in it. Could Because the companies are not releasing what is actually in there. And before we get into it, I wanted to give a shout out to Noreen O'Connor. She did her video, which was Nail Tech Reacts, this video. And it kind of helped confirm some of my theories. And also she gives you really good explanation from her view as a nail technician, so I'm going to link her video down below as well. So the funny thing is, typically about cosmetic chemistry, you don't really want a reaction. So that's why this product was so intriguing, because it does cause such a violent reaction on the nail. Usually you would just use something like acetone or ethyl acetate, and this is just going to kind of re-dissolve the nail polish off of your nails, and that's why you can wipe it off with something like a cotton pad. So in this case though, this exploding nail polish remover, something is causing these bonds in the gel nail polish and the regular nail polish to break it down and that's why it's giving this kind of explosive reaction. Also keep in mind this was only with the one layer itself, there's no base coat or top coat for this kind of reaction. So as you can see on the regular nail polish, it does bubble a bit. Nothing crazy where it's like bursting open, but there are, there is something going on here. The main ingredients in a nail polish is a solvent, which is basically what things dissolve into, either ethyl acetate or butyl acetate most commonly. That's what it is in Christine's nail polishes. And this solvent is volatile. This means it's gonna evaporate easily at room temperature. It evaporates these film formers, create a film on the nail, and this is what gives you your hard nail polish. So this is what nitrocellulose does in regular nail polish, is help form this hard film on top of your nails. And this is also why as your polishes get older, they get a little bit thicker because the solvent is evaporating, causing it to have that thicker texture to it. And in a gel nail polish, that works differently you actually need like a UV light or an LED light or something like that to cure it because you have these monomers, most likely methacrylate, and these little monomers combine with the photo initiator, which can be benzoyl peroxide like you'd find in over-the-counter acne medication. And combined with this, combining the benzoyl peroxide and the UV light, these monomers will combine with each other yielding polymers, and that's what gives it that strong, durable, color on the nail. So what this exploding nail polish remover product is doing is breaking down these bonds. And since there's obviously stronger bonds in the gel nail polish, I think that is why it's reacting more violently. And in the regular nail polish, it does bubble down a bit because it can be breaking down like the nitrocellulose. And this combined whatever the solvent is in the nail polish remover helps break down these components in a nail polish. The question is, what is in this nail polish remover that is causing this to happen. So in the info that was provided to Christine, one company said it was a weak organic base, a resin, and cellulose. As Christine said, that doesn't also seem to be anything that would cause such a violent reaction. In fact, I also think it's probably not a weak organic base. And I think in fact, it's probably not a weak organic base. It's probably a strong inorganic base and one of the comments that Noreen had shared in her video was that somebody said that they tested this and that it was and that this product was made up of caustic soda ammonia and ethanol I believe it was now we don't know for sure if they tested it but this does make a lot of sense caustic soda is actually sodium hydroxide which is one of the strongest bases out there and as well as ammonia, ammonium hydroxide, that is also a base. Could be partially what Christine was recognizing when she said it was like paint thinner. Used ammonia, ammonium hydroxide a lot and that stuff is like Ooh. So the body heat temperature combined with the higher concentration of these bases probably did a lot of the work in terms of breaking this product down. And this is why they tell you do not get this on your skin. So much like acid, Bases are corrosive. You wouldn't want to put, a lot of cleaning supplies are really basic and you don't want to leave those sitting on your skin. Same thing for this, especially in the concentrations it's at. You don't want to get this on your skin because it will start to corrode, it, like it's a corrosive. It's gonna 
irritate your skin, it can give you chemical burns, all like all things you don't want to have happen. I am going to share what is referred to as the SDS, or safety data sheet for both ammonia as well as sodium hydroxide. If you see sodium hydroxide on an ingredients list in something, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. In most cases, the sodium hydroxide is used to adjust the pH. So for instance, if you combine sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, two very strong corrosive substances, and you mix those together, you actually are yielded with table salt and water. So they neutralize each other out. So that's why it's not necessarily bad. But in this case, it is used because they want it to be corrosive and it's not balanced out with other ingredients to make it less basic if that makes sense. I just don't want people to get scared. Do you see that on an ingredients list? That is the reason is to help adjust the pH of the formula. So potentially there could be the bases in this formula. Again, we don't know what's in it because they won't share with us. But like I said, combined with whatever the solvent is in this formula, this could also be what's stripping away at the nail polish. Obviously acetone is very intense, but there are stronger solvents out there that could be doing this too. I can't even begin to speculate what solvents are in there. So all that being said, this company was not very straightforward with the ingredients that were in their product and in the US and other places. It is required for you to have the ingredients at least on the label when you purchase the product. Online's kind of iffy that that's something that laws need to catch up with the times. If you have clicked on this video to find out, you're obviously a very savvy consumer and know not to buy sketchy things like this. A company is not sharing the ingredients. That's usually a big red flag and I usually try to avoid those companies. And just buy from reputable companies. If you learned something today, don't forget to click the like button and if you wanna see more videos of mine, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss a new upload. And as always, I'm going to leave links to some resources down below so you can do some research on your own as well. And with that, I will see you in my next video.